Hi E2, my name is Michael Cook, I look like this, and I work at Imperial College, which looks like this in London. I'm a PhD student working in a field called computational creativity. Computational creativity is all about seeing what kind of things we can get computers to do that we might expect only humans can do. Things like painting pictures, telling jokes, or in my case, developing video games. Throughout my PhD, I've been working on a game designing system called Angelina. And Angelina built this game called Hot Tomato in mid-2012. This was from a version of Angelina that used The Guardian to find news articles, judge them for some kind of a value of interestingness, and then try and build a platform game that was themed around the news article. So this is called Hot NATO, which was a pun that Angelina invented on the phrase hot potato. And it was about the war in Afghanistan and the relationship between NATO, President Obama and Hamid Karzai. The level design itself is based on an older version of Angelina that puts together power-ups, enemy placements and levels so that the player has a sense of progression as they walk through the game. But what you'll also notice is that different sound effects play and different images pop up as we move around the game. So you should be able to hear some gunfire right now. That's the recording of a helicopter gunship firing a bunch of bullets out really fast. It's a really loud and aggressive noise when you play the game. And other images will pop up as you move around. So that's a picture of the Afghanistan mountains. And you're about to see a photo of Hamid Karzai, the Afghan president. These images and sounds were picked by Angelina based on the kinds of words that were used in the news article, the tags that it found, and information that it got from places like Twitter. Angelina is able to read Twitter to find out what people think of people like Hamid Karzai and then change the sorts of images that it finds as a result. So you're going to see a happy picture of a President Obama later next to a very angry picture of Hamid Karzai. While some of this might look creative and intelligent, a lot of it comes down to serendipity as well. So the image you're about to see comes up for a Google search for terrorism but doesn't really have much relevance to the news article. And the sound you're hearing now, the electronic drone, sounds like it's a good choice for a game that's about war and about feeling unsettling, but in reality I have no idea how Angelina came up with that choice. We're almost at the end of the level now. You'll see that I had to pick up multiple power-ups to get here, and that's one of the key things that Angelina does in the design of these games. It'll play them itself to make sure that the player has to explore different areas of the level in order to find jump power-ups or keys to fit locks. We've moved on a bit since then though, and as you'll see in the next game I'm about to show you, Angelina can be a lot more intelligent in the kinds of challenges it sets the player now. This is A Puzzling Present, a game we released in Christmas last year on Android and desktop platforms for free. It's a puzzle platformer where you have to guide Santa to the exit through a bunch of levels, each one requiring the use of some kind of special power to complete. The level design, as well as the design of the special ability Santa has, were both done by Angelina from scratch. What I mean by that is, unlike with the platform games where Angelina would choose a pre-designed power-up like a jump power-up and modify it slightly, this time we gave Angelina access to the entire code base for a game and asked it to create a new bit of code that would define a new ability for the player. The way Angelina would do this is very similar to the tutorial level I'm about to play now actually. You can see that just by running and jumping around, Santa can't get over this tower in the middle of the level. So what we would allow Angelina to do is to write a new bit of code and attach it to a button on the keyboard and then simulate playing the level with this new bit of code available to it. If it finds a way to reach the exit, as you can see we've done here, it knows that the mechanic was useful and it let the player do something new. Once we had a set of mechanics, Angelina went about designing levels for them. You can see that these levels look much more organic than the level that you saw in Hot NATO. That's because Angelina is placing each block individually. This means that overall, the system's much more detailed than it was before. It's able to look at real game code. It's able to simulate the game in exactly the same way that a human player would play it. Even though it's not as weird and wacky as games like Hot NATO, A Puzzling Present is a real step forward for Angelina, and it's a chance to do some really exciting new things with procedural generation. In particular, the ability to write new code means that Angelina has an opportunity to come up with things that human designers might never have thought of themselves. Thanks for watching, E2. If you want to play A Puzzling Present or Hot NATO or any of the games that Angelina's made, you can find us online at www.gamesbyangelina.org.